It's finally finished. This vision I've had of the perfect PC now actually exists. Every single cable is custom made. Every wire has been hand measured. It has a custom fan splitter, the most compact RTX 4090 on the market. It even has a 3D printed bracket to support the second radiator for extra cooling. The result, hundreds of watts of performance ready to be unleashed. Look, it's one thing to cram all of these components together in a form factor of this size. We're working with just a 10 liter case here, which is kind of mind blowing. But the ultimate goal here was to you know, be able to fit all of these components, but still make it look ultra clean on the inside, to be able to take those side panels off and have all of the hardware look like it was made to fit together in the first place. Now, in my last video, we had basically finished this build up until the tubing and the fittings. But I've got to say that was definitely the hardest part. You know, we had already filled this piece case to the brim without those tubings and fittings in there. So to make this work, I knew I'd have to use some pretty specific and special fittings from EK. Now they're not sponsoring this build or anything. In fact, every single fitting and tubing has been bought, but I just do really have to mention that this build is simply impossible without some of these very specific fittings. These low profile 90 degree fittings, for example, I've used two of these directly on the CPU block. And without these, the side panel just would not close. Those feed into rotary offset fittings, which I I've used a mountain of here. They really help line things up perfectly since I've gone with metal tubing. And look, I could have just gone with soft tubing, called it a day, that would have been easy, but it wouldn't have done this build justice. I'd already gone so far with everything else, so why not go that extra step and do something just absolutely crazy? So the tubing that I've gone with here, I actually don't even think EK makes it anymore. I think I bought literally the last batch, but it's 12 millimeter black nickel tubing. It's just absolutely amazing. It looks so, so good. Of course, you just get those beautiful reflections on it. It has this like really unique smoked look to it as well. And there was a pretty hard tubing run that I did have to make in this build. It's from the CPU block to the GPU block. It goes between the motherboard and the power supply through this really tiny gap. And what you're seeing here is like the fifth attempt. I actually first tried this with soft tubing, but it didn't work. This run is so tight that the tubing was like literally folding and collapsing. There was just too much pressure. Surprisingly though, with hard tubing, I could just make it work. And yeah, this was a really rewarding one to complete. I really like the fact as well that it's mostly hidden. So yeah, overall, super happy with the tubing and the fittings. I know I've used a bunch of fittings, but I think it really gives this unique presence to the entire build. Filling the loop as well is pretty easy since I've made room for a valve on the GPU block. I can swing out that side radiator completely fine and get the loop completely topped up. And I've got to be honest, you know, seeing this thing power on for the very first time, I got that same feeling when I powered on my very first PC build. That just immense relief and satisfaction knowing that all of the hard work that you've done and the crazy build up, it had all finally paid off. Of course, my first PC build was nothing like what we have here, but in terms of the difficulty and the new experience and all of the challenges, it feels pretty equivalent. Now, I couldn't help myself. I ended up 3D printing yet another part to improve this build just a bit further. So the GPU block in this build, I don't know why, but it has this tendency to kind of just bend outwards away from the middle of the case. And in this scenario, that means towards the side radiator. So what I printed was basically just a GPU alignment clamp, which just attaches to the spine of the case. Really simple, basic model, but yeah, works incredibly well. Now the GPU block is held like just directly in the middle of the case. This actually worked so well that I also redesigned the side radiator bracket to work the same way. So now it just hooks directly under that beam. 
team and just really satisfyingly locks into place. Now filling up the loop with coolant is something that I took very, very seriously because this build does not have a single reservoir because they're just simply isn't any room for one. So what I did was just hook up essentially a drip to the PC. It's just a soft tube and a res. The build is completely off at this point and I'm just naturally filling it up and letting gravity do the work. The goal is to get as much liquid in there as possible. I had to rotate the build a bunch of times, but about 20 minutes later, it had worked pretty well. Basically, I had gotten enough liquid in there so that the pump could start pushing things around. And from there, I just switched it on, cycled through different pump speeds, kept flipping and rotating the build around to get all of the air out, and and ran the build at high pump speeds for about an hour. After that, the build was completely full. So yeah, bit of a rundown on how that works. So now the final verdict, which is performance. Was all of this even worth it? Uh, more specifically, let's take a look at that RTX 4090. That thing is a powerhouse. And if you remember in the air-cooled configuration of this build, we were seeing just under 70 degrees at a room temperature of 22. And that was at full load 4K gaming. And our liquid setup, gets about the same result. But if we take a closer look, we can actually see that the cooling output here is actually much better. Firstly, the fan speeds that I'm running for this liquid cooled build are much quieter than the air setup with the 4090 FE. And so same thermals at lower noise, technically that's more cooling performance. But more importantly, the 4090 in our liquid build is pulling about 20 to 40 watts more than the 4090 FE was. And that alone is increasing things here more than a few degrees. If you remember, we didn't actually liquid cool the Founders Edition card. I instead used the Inno 3D iChill X3. And for whatever reason, the 4090 chip on this one just pulls more power. To be honest, that extra 30, 40 watts is kind of tipping things over the edge here. In some cases, I saw this thing pulling above 430 watts watts pretty comfortably, which is nuts. Now my usual fix for this would just be undervolting. Basically you're just running the GPU at a lower voltage and since we run the same clock speeds, there's no loss in performance, but the temperature and power savings are just insane. There's basically no reason you wouldn't do this on something like a 3080 or a 3090 for example, but doing this on 40 series, it's different. I've already made a video talking about this, but yeah, in summary, it just feels really janky. The GPU says it's running at factory clocks, but you take a closer look and and benchmark the performance, there is actually a decrease. A few people I've spoken to about this have said it's something called clock stretching, which sounds about right, and yeah, I would just rather not. The good news is that we can still get things under control by just slightly lowering the power limit. Doing this, we of course do see a small reduction in clock speeds, but at least the reported GPU clock isn't lying to us this time around. Uh, it's showing us exactly what it's running at. So with a power limit of 85%, this build ends up working extremely well. That keeps the 4090 running running under 400 watts, which is still a very generous amount and kind of what it should be running at. It's what the FE is typically running at. So very minimal performance loss when doing this, uh, but it is enough to get the build running in the low to mid 60s. And to be honest, I'll take that. I mean, the performance that this thing is pushing out, the overall cooling is actually pretty insane for the form factor. Realistically, if you took a hybrid 4090 and installed it in a glass mid tower, the thermals would probably be pretty similar. So yeah, I'd say that this build has been a success. The cooling output is an upgrade over the air setup that I was running previously. Basically, I can now run the 4090 at full load, but at much better noise levels. I'll mostly be playing Overwatch 2 on this thing at 1440p 240Hz. And I mean, the temperatures here, the system is barely breaking a sweat while we're locked at 600 FPS. The Ryzen 7800X 3D as well, I was a little bit concerned for what the thermals would be like there since it's sharing the same warm loop as the 4090. But yeah, thankfully, no issue there at all. In most of the games I tested, I saw it pulling under 60 watts, which is just nuts, and that is definitely helping our 4090 run as cool as possible. For example, I don't think this build would have been possible with a 13900K. It would have been adding too much heat to the loop, and that would have made the GPU run even warmer. Now, for those of you who are daring enough to try and recreate this, or for those of you who want to build something, you know, kind of similar, I will leave all of the 3D files and the parts listed down below. Uh, but yeah, it goes without saying, this is like the most difficult PC build that I've ever done. Definitely the most amount of hours that I've put into a single build as well. But for me, it is the perfect PC. Like I've just never built something that looks this good, this clean, and also nothing close to this amount of cooling performance and density either.